Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. You can see Art and I are with our favorite virtual gourmet, John Mariani, master of travel, food, and drink. And oh, Leisha, Leisha, also yes. Leisha. Uh, you know, John, we have, um, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, going to five star uh, uh, restaurants and traveling Europe and all the little special restaurants around town. This is grilling season coming up for right. many of us in America. Uh, what's the story on grilling? Is that is that like, is that like a gourmet kind of thing, or what? What's special about it in America, perhaps, uh, uh, that you can so share with us? It is, it is a very traditional um, way of cooking in America, as it is in most of the world. I mean, they do grill stuff in Europe. They do certainly do grill stuff in Africa and Asia and so forth. But we have made it uh, a real specialty. Uh, the overall term is barbecue, um, but that's barbecue technically means slow cooking on a grill with some smoke involved, okay? That's barbecue. And it does not mean bob a cue in French, nose to tail, it's, it's nonsense. It comes from barbacoa, no Taino Indian word, uh, which meant uh, lattice work of sticks they used to use to cook. Anyway, um, all throughout the South, all throughout the North in the summer, um, people were barbecuing uh, in America. And it was one of the manly arts. The women were back in the kitchen turning something over a spit or cooking mostly, and this is important, um, they were cooking mostly in the hearth. Now, you can't really saute in the hearth. Uh, you can't really fry stuff in the hearth, which is not that easy to do on the grill. But outside in the grill, you could do very quick cooking or you can do very slow smoked cooking. So if you're going to do a whole pig, um, on a, as, a, as my, uh, as you know, my, my son does for my birthday in August, we have a big pig roast for 20 people. Um, and that's a very festive occasion. But we, uh, and, and it's, when I say it's a manly thing, it's uh, uh, men usually tend to it um, uh, with pride, flip the hamburgers and the hot dogs. We're supposed to know how to do this. This is, this is man's work. Of course, that's nonsense, but that's the way it is. <clears throat> and the man goes to Costco and buys way too many pounds of ribs and so forth. But it is also to a lot of people terrifying. Uh, what do I need to do? What about the, the coals? What kind of grill should I use? Does it have to go up and down? Uh, do I throw them to the side? How do I smoke things? What do, what do, what do I need for, with, the, with the, the thing to lift it off? And what about fish? Because uh, it sticks to the grill and so forth. So I happened to write some years ago, grilling for dummies, which was not my favorite assignment. Um, as a literature, but uh, this, this book made me more money than any of my other books uh, put together. So thank you, Grilling, for Dummies People. And this is still available. Uh, I still get royalty checks. You can get this on Amazon or, or uh, Barnes & Noble, or you can well, probably... For, for good reason, John. It's a classic. Well, I mean, you see it probably, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and, and I, I must say that Marie Rama, my co-author, did the um, recipes in here, whereas I was doing all of the manly man art. So I wrote 10 <laughs> commandments of grilling. And so here they are. Practice patience. Wait for the fire to be ready. Or when you know when the fire is ready um, and how to light the fire. Uh, there are various ways, various stupid ways to light the fire. Um, the most difficult way is to put just some uh, uh, paper under wood would never work. You got to use charcoal, but charcoal briquettes are fine, but they are compressed and contain chemicals that allow them to be compressed. And charcoal, the lump charcoal, is much much better. It it it, it heats more quickly. It goes to a higher heat, and uh, that's what I highly recommend. What about gas grills? If you must, but it's gonna taste something like gas when you you know it's just i just you know, for this book i had to work with gas grills as well as uh like old weber grills the circular things and i cannot say enough about charcoal um because it just imparts a flavor and a smokiness you're not going to get from a gas grill no matter how you how expensive you could spend ten thousand dollars on these things it's a little crazy so but you got to get those coals ready the coals have to be orange 
most of them have to be lighted with a gray ash. And if they're too hot, um, just let them die down. If they're cooling off, add more charcoal, okay? And uh, second thing is be organized. Set up a table right next to it that has everything you're going to need from ingredients and Tabasco sauce to a mop to put the, the sauce on to a long fork, a spatula, have it all there. Serving platters, because things can go quickly. Even though I said barbecue is slow cooking, cooking a steak or a hamburger is very fast cooking, okay? Um, marinate, marinate, marinate. Um, marinades, and there's a lot in the book, lots and lots of them, uh, which can be sweet, which could be sour, which could be sweet and sour, which could be olive oil based, which could be vegetable based, um, adds enormous flavor to things cooked on the grill. Um, um, don't skimp on fuel, as I said. Um, a lot of people, they put a, well, I put about, you know, a quarter of a pound of, it, of, of uh, coals in there. No, you got to be very generous. If you have, let's say, the typical round grill, you want to fill half of that, not to the top, a layer, a good layer um, of charcoal and get that lighted. Oh, I started to say about how to light it. There's also the stove pipe, which I don't, uh, I don't particularly like, which puts coals down the bottom and halfway in, and then you put paper, newspaper, and you light it on fire. I've never found that works as effectively as for me when I use every single light that I do so is that electric, like cow prod um, little gadget. Um, you plug it in, it heats up very, very quickly. And within 15 minutes, your coals are ready. When you take it out before that. Um, that's what I highly recommend. Um, so don't skimp on the fuel. Police the fire. Fires change constantly. So if it's getting too hot, put the top on, put the top of the grill on, and it'll die down. Or, you know, they have the little vents too. And if you open the vents, it gives more oxygen to make the fire hotter. If you close the vents, it's going to the, the, the fire is going to uh, uh, go down because it doesn't have enough oxygen, okay? Um, build a fire with different hot spots. That's a good idea. Uh, have your main section of the coals red hot. Throw your steak or your chicken on there and sear it. Give it a nice char, you know? But it's not cooked on the inside. Now, if you keep it on the center with that hot fire, the thing is going to, the, the char is going to become black and coal and the inside is going to cook too fast. So you just sear it, and then you put it, remember I said you use about half half of the um, grill with the coals, put it on the other half of the grill that does not have the coals, because that's going to be hot also. You're going to be getting a lot of ancillary heat over there, and uh, depending on how smoky you want to put the uh, lid on. But take that food off after you've got the sear that you want. Um, understand the grilling variables are air temperature, wind if you have it uh grill type and you got to practice to get it you know you got to get to know your grill um uh the kind of fuel used the temperature of the food whether it's been in the refrigerator or not all of those affect grilling times um fill, figure out when food is done nothing better than taking uh they have these needles that you can buy uh, kitchen needles and what I do and what my whole family does, you stick it into the meat, whatever it is, chicken or whatever, and uh, and the steak, and you put it, after a few minutes, you put it to right here under your lip, and it will be cool. Okay, it's not done yet. <clears throat> put it in again. It's getting warm. When it gets to the point where, yeah, this is definitely getting quite warm. All right, that's rare to medium rare. If you stick it in there and it's hot, that's going to be medium and after that you're not gonna you're not gonna be putting it up there at all but that's the best way to tell you could also use a, a thermometer okay they work they work fine but that's an easy way to do it um number nine uh sprint from the grill to the table ah yeah very very important i hate food that lies around Okay, the table is, is uh, where are the beans, honey? Where are we, everybody doing something about open the wine? Yeah, 10 minutes to go before the string beans are done. You can let meat rest, and I haven't argued with my son about this, about having a steak rest for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, come on. You you do that, and then when you carve that steak, it's going to be lukewarm. Okay. Um, 
I am all for serving food when it is hot off the grill. Everybody likes it that way. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be delicious. So pay attention to that. And last but not least, relax. Uh, it is not a relaxing thing to constantly be at the grill, coaxing the fire, turning things over. It does take some care. Um, the more you do it, the better you get out it, get at it because you know, okay, this is the sear I like. Oh, it's time to move it over here. Um, so relax, but I would not have a gaggle of people around you saying, Hey, how about that Mets game last night? How'd huh? you see what, Hey, did you see the uh, tonight show? That was, that was really funny. Huh? Um, no, you are the cook just as a cook in the kitchen should not be conversing with everybody and taking phone calls. Um, you got to pay attention when you cook and that's extremely important. So be relaxed but don't let yourself be interrupted and instigated into long-winded conversations. And you do those 10 commandments of grilling and you're going to be all right in my book, which is called. And there is your book. Uh, John, all I can say, there's another rule and that is don't put the book grilling by dummies, grilling for dummies. Don't put it too close to the fire. That that's my rule. <laughs> Cause I gotta, I gotta have your book open when I do that. And get a cool apron, because you can, it gets messy. Mm. So kiss me on the chef sort of thing. Yeah, it gets something <laughs> cool. Well, congratulations on the book. It's still a classic. Thanks. I see it everywhere. Thanks. And, um, and of course, we appreciate you uh, repeating the 10, what do you call them, most important rules or just 10 rules? Commandments. Commandments. Do, commandments. This or, do not do these things at your peril. <laughs> Well, I, I trust me. I'm I'm a believer. John, thank you so much. It's time to go. I got uh, I got the grill warming up outside. Good. I'll be right over. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.